the Gospel Highway. I was speaking to a professor at Nyack University and he said to me, what you're discussing is the new Gospel Highway. So I reflected on that. Originally the Bible says, how blessed are the feet that take good news. And why are the feet blessed? Because it was carried by foot. People walked from place to place and it was word of mouth, one to one and one to many. But that was true for centuries and in fact many people were illiterate and so it had to be a verbal communication. And so that went on for uh, centuries until ultimately there was the printing press. Uh, and that revolutionized things. 400 years ago there was the printing of the King James Version of the Bible, which uniquely, for the first time, gave verse numbers to every verse. So you can say John 3.16. Before you would have said, uh, the letter by John, somewhere there after a few pages, you know. But that was really a beauty of the King James Bible. It started by numbering everything. So it was a great way of communicating the gospel and also distributing it, but it still needed uh, people taking it somewhere to distribute it. So whilst it was fantastic, it still needed the person to person. And by the way, both those things are still absolutely valid today. The one-to-one -one communication is really a fantastic way of winning people to Christ, and that's how I was won to Christ myself. Later on came the radio. Of course, Christians tend to resist new technology, and when the radio came along, it was of the devil as far as people were concerned, because there was a lot of bad stuff on there. But we should, inv you know, we talk about the prince of the power of the air, uh, and, and we certainly let the, the, the devil have the radio for a while. But then we started uh, using it as a means of reaching people. After that came, oh, I, w I should say, with the radio, and it applies to the TV too, to, to really be on there, you had to produce programs, you had to have studios, you had to have antenna, you had to have staff, and it was expensive. And the other thing about it was you had to have licenses. And in many countries you couldn't get licenses, and if you did it was for a local station which had very limited reach. That's why we went to shortwave. Shortwave had, um, I don't know if you know much about uh, these things, but uh, basically uh, FM, FM is line of sight. If you can see the antenna, you can hear it. Then there was AM, which sort of followed the contours of the land, but shortwave bounced off the ionosphere down, and it could go thousands of miles, but the signal got worse. It was sort of this, and you got that sort of sound. So the quality wasn't good, but when you had nothing else, it, it worked. But as soon as other options started coming along, people tended to switch to those. So shortwave, uh, to some extent, fell into decline. Uh, the TV, of course, is a very powerful media. They say, obviously, what you see, you remember better than what you just hear. And so visual communication is really important. Um, but they also say you have to hear the message about six times before it starts to register. Um, and I think probably nowadays, because so much stuff is sent at us, we need to hear it more than six times. Um, but the TV, again, very powerful, incredibly expensive. Uh, we've used all these media. We set up a TV network in Brazil uh, with uh, antennas and everything in 22 cities. But the cost is high. And to compete against the major uh, producers is really expensive. Of course, Ministries now do use the TV, some well and some not so well. Some you'd be happy with and some you wouldn't be too happy with. But nevertheless, it's there and it's a, a tremendous tool. Now, of course, we have this. This little device people are carrying around. I said in America, they're looking at it ten times a day. They all laughed. It's hundreds of times a day. People are looking at this little device we're carrying around. But what they're carrying is a means of, they're carrying a Bible in their hands. You can put a version Bible on there. They're carrying a gospel tract. They're carrying a, a communication tool, a telephone. It, it's a fantastic device. And it's a huge opportunity. And it's an opportunity which largely the church is not yet using. 
Most churches use the internet uh, uh, to, to broadcast their local services, what time the services are, who's going to be speaking, etc., etc. Very few see it as an evangelistic tool. And that's something we are very keen on. Evangelism is at the core of everything we do. In the past, radio and TV is sort of blasting out there. You don't necessarily, uh, it, it's sort of got a wide reach, but it's not very targeted. It's just whatever you switch on the TV, you might see a kid's program and you're not interested. With the internet, you can target specific audience groups by age, by location, by language, by culture, by education, and even by their t the level of technology they're carrying around in their hand. If, for instance, they've got low uh, internet, you can just send a, a page. If they've got good internet, you can send them a three-minute video. So we can target very much more precisely, um, and you can target specific subjects so people can pick and choose what it is they want to see. Our program is called Yes, he is. Um, and I'll show you in a moment a video. Um, and this, this program is targeted at, at various levels of, of people. So, for instance, if you're depressed, we've got a video on there for somebody who's depressed. You can go and search that video by 12 different languages we're up to at the moment. Uh, all the major languages like Chinese, uh, Arabic, uh, English, Spanish, Portuguese, etc., etc., um, and one or two uh, less major languages. Obviously, over time, we'll spread that to a lot more. But you can then search by um, subject. So, if you like football, you can share with your friend a testimony of a footballer. Uh, and we, if you download the app, it's called Yes, He Is, uh, you'll find all that material there. And the idea is to get Christians to share their faith one with the other. When we own shortwave facilities, they cost an absolute fortune to run. But this can be run um, with YouTube, and we don't have to pay anything for it. It's down to us as Christians to actually share our faith, and that's really the key as to what we're trying to do. Uh, there's a long-term goal. You know, so they say 7% of Christians ever share their faith and lead someone to the Lord. That's a disgrace, really because it's not optional, it's a command. Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel, making disciples of, every, uh, of all people. And we don't do that. We need to discover that that's a really powerful opportunity that's given to us. We have no excuse for not using every means available. We see the Apostle Paul used all sorts of different means to reach people. We talked about him at Athens this morning and how he used, he, he didn't even use the Bible. He just used their own gods and started to re relate them to, to God. So we have the opportunity to do that, and we can do it person to person. Uh, I want to talk uh, about each of the initiatives we mentioned here, because uh, they're all internet-based, but they've got slight variations. Uh, the Yes, He Is program is very much designed for a Christian to share with another Christian. When I felt God impress this on my heart, uh, I was saying, how do we touch a billion? Shortwave audiences are going down. We've touched a lot of people, but we're nowhere near that target. I'm an accountant. And I, I, I don't like exaggerated numbers, but there's no way we were anywhere near a billion. And I felt God say, I've already given you the answer. I said, well, well what is it? The answer is in the scripture. How shall they hear it unless they have a preacher? Someone needs to tell them. And who's going to tell them? The non-Christians aren't going to tell them. It's us, the Christians, that have got to tell them. People are nervous about sharing their faith. People uh, perhaps are uncomfortable about it. They feel awkward about it. This actually is so simple. You know, uh, it says, how blessed are the feet that took good news. Now, if it was written today, I think he would say, how blessed are the fingers that send good news. Because that's all it is, is a press of a finger, and you can send news to your 200 friends on Facebook. And, and the explosive, well, there were 76,000 people shared and 10 million viewed. That's the kind of growth that's possible because that, there's also onward shares. You share to one person, he says, oh, that's good, I'll send it to somebody else. Um, so the Yes, He Is program is very much, and that's at the heart of what we do, is for Christians to share with their friends. There are some problems. Problem number one is Christians don't like to share. They like to consume. They like to receive. 
we need to change that uh, in people's minds. They've got to understand it's their responsibility. Uh, second problem is Christians have Christian friends. Well, you know, and they like to say certain things to Christian friends, which may not be appropriate to non-Christian friends. So we've got to get the mindset changed. And if I have an objective in life, it is to try and get the church to understand this is a means of evangelism that's available to all of us. And we can reach the world with a message. If every Christian tomorrow just shared the gospel with one, we would change the world. And that technology exists. We can do it. Uh, there's about, what, 4 billion people online right now. In America, they're working on O3B, which is the other 3 billion. How do we put everybody online? There will be everybody online at some point in time in the future. Even little kids are online. They shouldn't be sometimes, because some of the stuff they get to watch isn't good. But, uh, you know, we have the opportunity. One of the other things we've noticed is that people download the app, and after a short while, it falls into disuse. They lose interest, and they stop doing that. That's another thing we have to tell. And that's why we want to speak to pastors to continually be reminding their congregation, well, who are you going to reach this week for Jesus? Who are you going to send a message of hope to this week? Um, of course, they always think it's the pastor's job anyhow, and we've got to change that mindset too. Uh, of course, uh, I mentioned that uh, Christians have Christian friends, and therefore they send content which is appropriate only to Christians. And we want them to change that and send content that's appropriate to non-Christians. Our sites are searchable. If you've got almost any subject you care to name, we've got half a dozen videos on it. If it's depression, if it's suicide, if it's football, if it's uh, family issues, there's something on it. The Bible says they overcame by the word of their testimony and the blood of the Lamb. Testimony is important. You can argue about the Bible and everything, but you can't argue about somebody's testimony. It's what's happened to them. And therefore, that's really important uh, as we share those testimonies. The uh, second thing we mentioned was landing pages. That is where we pay to put it on uh, a Google search engine or Facebook, and uh, people then receive it because it's paid. I have to say, regrettably, that's more effective than the first one, which should be the most effective, because that's one-to-one, -one, when Christian with their friend. Here we're doing it to a total stranger, we're advertising, and because we're going out to total strangers, um, we know we get reaching the unsaved, because the majority of people are not saved. Uh, and so they're clicking on these things and responding. There are disadvantages to that. By the way, I'm told two million people every day are looking for God. Two million people. Uh, that's a huge opportunity. They're looking for something to do with God. If you look at all the Go Google search engines, people are looking for, for the meaning of life, something to do with God every day. The disadvantages, of course, is it costs money. And people get a lot of spam. And so probably uh, it's not taken always as seriously but nevertheless, it does seem to be more effective, and we get a lot of response from that. One of the other difficulties is it's sometimes hard to place them into a church because they may be in, I don't know, Azerbaijan. And I don't know a good church in Azerbaijan at the moment, unless one of you are from there. But, um, you know, so th there are difficulties with that, but nevertheless, it works. Um, CV outreach is very interesting. It's something we've been doing for the last year. Um, I don't know how many of you know, but Google gives $10,000 a month grants to charities to use for Google advertising. Um, most churches don't know about that. Mo uh, most churches aren't really utilizing it, and if they are, they haven't got the right material. And perhaps, um, so in America, we're trialing it. We've got about 200 churches we're working with already. And uh, how many million dollars worth of advertising? We had about eight million dollars worth of advertising, something like that already. And um, what we do is then we, we find the words that are uh, most searched, which relate to Christian things, like for instance, uh, the meaning of life. Not many advertisers are looking for the meaning of life. Uh, they're looking for, you know, all sorts of other things. But we're, we're finding words that don't cost a lot 
of that $10,000 to use to target um, those people. And then we're linking out with the, the local church's website and the church is due to make the response and connection. So it's a great thing. It closes the circle. The response is automatically to that church. By having 200 churches, and we hope to have about 400 by the end of this year, we're able, because the response may be you're in Chicago and the response comes from Dallas. So we can move the, the responses around and say, well, that one should go to Dallas. Um, uh, or if that same church has a branch in Dallas, that's fine. Uh, so what happens there is with CV Outreach, we're managing it for them. The church can do it themselves if they want. We just show them how to do it. But generally they say, well, look, you guys are doing it fine. You've got a whole team of people researching what the right words are to use. We'll let you do it. And they're generally pretty happy with how that's going. That is available worldwide. But as I say, we, it's a resource issue from our point of view in terms of, first of all, trialing it in the States, making sure we've got it absolutely right, and then rolling it out. We've started doing it in Germany a little bit and a few in the UK. But ultimately, that will be a very big thing and a very big opportunity, I think. And who's going to turn, up, turn away $10,000 a month free uh, from Google? I mean, uh, and I, I wondered about the longevity of that. I wondered whether it would last for very long because why should they keep doing it? But I heard an explanation which made me very happy. I understand they get a tax write-off because they've given away money to the charity. So that sounded good. I understand tax and that sort of thing because I'm an accountant. And, and so uh, when I heard oh, that, I think, oh, there's a very good reason. So they're giving away something they've got spare and they get a tax write-off for it. Sounds great, doesn't it? A great business for them. So uh, I don't think it's something that's going to stop anytime soon. So we're willing to put some time and effort into that and work with churches in that respect. So um, that's CV Outreach. Then the Go Everywhere campaign was really pretty much a landing page strategy, but we timed it to go everywhere on the same day at the same time. The, the first time we did it, we used a thing called Thunderclap. And what happened was you'd send, everybody would send their data to Thunderclap and on a certain time and day, it would be released. Unfortunately, what happened is uh, Facebook realized that uh, this was happening. And it started in Australia and it was rippling on through. And as soon as we got to Africa, they stopped it. So we had a lot of complaints from people. They said, well, we sent all our data in and you never did anything with it. Well, it wasn't us, it was stopped. So we learned a lesson from that. This next time around, we did it by saying to each individual, look, you hold your post until we send you an email reminder and we'll do that on the day. Then the thing is coming from millions of different directions. That way they couldn't stop it. And that's why we got 10 million views, whereas the time before it was very small because it just got stopped too soon. But that's a great, uh, a great opportunity. Finally, um, we've discovered something um, new, which we hadn't um, really thought of before. Should have thought of prayer before, shouldn't we? But it's prayer. Um, who's thought of prayer as an evangelistic strategy? We pray for the harvest, yes. But who's thought of prayer as an event? We did a program in South Africa, um, and uh, we did online, uh, what's it called? Facebook Live prayer. We're getting 50 to 70,000 hits a week. And we're telling people we're going to pray for them. That's all. Uh, and it, it's initiating conversations. Uh, and we're having people getting saved just as a result of prayer. I've thought, of through, thought this through. The thing is, when we're offering to pray, and by the way, there are organizations who offer pray, but you have to pay for it. Well, we're saying, we're going to pray for you, and, uh, and, and no charge involved. And by the way, there's no charge for anything we do because it's, we're fully funded. Um, so when we offer to pray for somebody, we're doing something for them. When we ask them to respond to our ad or whatever, we're asking them to do something really, it, they have to do something towards us. It seems like it, we're asking them to do something, but prayer, we're saying, so we're really excited about this strategy. Each of our videos has at the end of it, a little tag, if you'd like to know more, 
press this. We've got a video about a lady who uh, had an abortion when she was 14, and she was racked with guilt for her entire life to the point when she got married, she had children, she felt like she was a bad mother, a bad wife, etc., etc., and she was suicidal. Well, um, that, uh, and she went to kill herself, and then God intervened, and she became a Christian, and now she feels free of that guilt. If you read that, or if you saw that as a woman feeling the same, you may not want someone to advise you or tell you or, or counsel you, but you may be happy to receive prayer. So what we're going to do in future, we're, we're sort of trialing it, is to put a tag on the bottom of our videos to say, if you'd like further information or prayer, click and we'll pray. And we must do it. We must make sure we do it. We, we are really kind of excited about that as a prospect for evangelism. And uh, we've already had, as I say, quite a number of people come to Christ as a result of that. I want to show you um, some stats of a single day. Um, go ahead, Andrew. This is uh, hour by hour. You'll see as people move across the earth, as, as they wake up, it comes on at different times. So that's what's happened in one day. 28,000 people. And we're just scratching the surface. We're, we're nowhere near. Um, uh, and there's certain areas, by the way, which we can't measure. We can't measure China, although we've got offices there. That goes on a different system. We can't get at it. So that would probably be another 30 40% on top of that. Also, we can't measure... Is it Facebook? We do, but we're not reporting Okay. We can measure Facebook, but it's not up there. So those numbers are very conservative. It's probably more like double those numbers. Um, this is uh, over... a a period of up till now, this year. Okay. You'll notice we don't have anything on Brazil. Well, actually, Brazil is quite active. I don't think we've managed to log that down yet. We only started that this year, so... But Brazil is very active. There's 40 million evangelicals there. So this is um, uh, a fantastic uh, opportunity, as you can see. And uh, it's something we want to uh, really follow through. How am I doing on time? I think I'm getting close. I do have one video I'd like to show you, and that's that one about that woman uh, who, who had the abortion, because really telling stories touches people. What, how can you get the gospel over in three minutes? That's the challenge. And what is the essence of the gospel? To my mind is, I met Jesus. He changed my life. He can do the same for you. If we can get that over in powerful messages, we can change the world.